Welcome time. in everyone to a brand new episode here on the Outcast Guild, and we already got a Hail Hydrate and Shenanigans. Thank you, Heidi and Yosh. Hello. Yeah. Hydrate thing. I don't know if I have enough water. All right. But yes, welcome in to our weekly D&D game here without a name really yet. Just Outcast Guild Campaign 1.5. I'm Geeks, the resident yeah, we, DM we around here. Yeah, we definitely better than that. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> but let's bring it over to everyone's favorite creepy warlock slash sorcerer. Leo, how you doing? Hi, I'm Leo. I'm an artist in indie game dev. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter and other social medias. There's probably a link tree in the chat. I'll be playing as Faye. Superman. <laughs> Faye Moriarty of the House Moriarty. Uh and also known as now uh the creepiest kind hearted warlock. That's about it for me. Mark. Hey, I'm Mark. I'm not Leo. I'm not an artist. But you can call me Mark because that's my name. And my screen name is, you know, that. Um, You'll find me here just about every Saturday doing this kind of shenanigans and fuckery. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Um, I, I, I work a lot. I'm busy. I don't have time to do much else. So yeah, Heidi, tell us about yourself. Hi. Um, I am Lady Heidi. I, I stream on Twitch at Lady Heidi. That's just my name. That's um, I do. Don't steal my line. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a variety streamer. I play lots, all kinds of games, from horror to story time games to um different kinds. All the all, all things. All, all things. the things. All things. I'm also on Instagram at Lady Heidi as well, so you can go find me there. I post some stuff, uh, pictures and whatnot. And we'll take it over to Geeks. All right. Yes, this is the first time here. Welcome in. Uh, okay, so just regular old shenanigans. Speaking of shenanigans, by the way, uh, we have a little drinking game because D&D is not always enough and we want to add more chaos to our lives. I mean, no. Uh, speaking of chaos, <laughs> and I have to say, no. Chaos, <laughs> and I have to say, Ooh. no. Chaos, <laughs> I have to say, Ooh. no. <laughs> Thank you, my Twitch me. <laughs> my, my tab just loaded. <laughs> so, uh, there, there is a, a geeks told me that there is a command somewhere. Uh, Exclamation point Leo that says, for the last time, physical dice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> he's not wrong. I need to come up with something better, but yeah. Fine. I'll use physical dice if everywhere. Right. <laughs> anyway, speaking for the shenanigans, uh, can you tell us the drinking rules? Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, for the drinking rules as they go, you may hear us say the word shenanigans, except when explaining the rules, we have to take a drink of whatever we're drinking with us. This could be whatever you want. Uh, if you're not of legal drinking age in the area you are in, then what I will say is this, please participate with something besides alcohol. Coffee, the soda, does whatever. Not the alcohol still does not contribute to the delinquency of minors. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we take a drink whenever we say the word shenanigans. If we're going to explain the rules, we take a drink oh. whenever there's healing of any kind. And we have a cleric now. Yeah. Uh, this could yay. be long rest, short rest, healing spells, healing potions. <laughs> we also take a drink if one of us goes down. That person has to take a drink. And. Yeah, yeah. If we make any type of TikTok reference, pop culture going, reference, because we're a whole bunch of nerds yeah. and geeks around here, we're taking a drink. Everyone here is. If 
Finally, we Mark. have a few special rules. Doing your pop culture mm -hmm. stuff. For some reason, <laughs> we decide, you know, hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's have a TPK. Mm -hmm. Knock on wood, hopefully What's it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. We're finishing Again, our no. drinks, and we're drinking until we forget. I'm still drinking. If Leo here <laughs> rolls a natural 20 on an attack roll, we're all taking a drink out of respect for him because this guy has real bad dice rolls when it comes to attacking. Skill checks, he's fine. Skill checks, fine. Attack rolls <laughs> and damage rolls. Okay, damage rolls is like an okay, but attack rolls is just awful. Physical dice, Leo. Physical, Physical dice. Down. But yes, on top of that. Yeah, go lay down. We have another rule. If Leo here, we're all taking a drink if Leo rolls a natural 20, but if he rolls a natural 1, he's finishing whatever drink he has on him. On the other I hand, though... two bottles of waters, yeah. And it's usually booze. <laughs> <laughs> on, the usual... on the other hand, though, if for whatever reason my dice decide, you know what, fuck it, let's kill the party and rolls a natural 20 on an attack roll, I'm finishing my drink. I need to keep you within 60 feet of me. That? Who? That you. That's Whatever me? character is rolling natural 20s. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's <laughs> I still gotta finish that drink, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But okay. I think that covers about everything now. We don't have any special other special rules, I don't think. Am I missing anything? No, no other special yeah. rules. But on top of that, like, if you guys want to check like out this, um, check out the rest of the stream, or say yeah. catch up with it at all, you can check us out on YouTube and on our own Spotify at the Outcast Guild. Ooh. We have a Spotify. <laughs> yeah, you can find us on Spotify. Like really Google. real people now. <laughs> yeah, you can find us out on uh, Spotify and Google Podcasts for all your podcast needs. The episode <laughs> one will be out. This Monday, I believe. I'll have to double check that though. <laughs> Sorry, this Friday. But yeah, um, I think that covers about everything on my end. You guys ready for all this? Anything else you want to mention? I should probably pull up my character sheet. Yeah, pulling up character sheets, everyone. <laughs> I'll out be the there. I'll be their daily reminder. <laughs> And yeah. Oh, I got signed out of D and D Beyond. So while they do that, let's get that new intro rolling for you. Ooh, new intro. As adventurers, we live dangerous lives, though this never gets easier. We've lost three of our own: Forge Master, Domar Dwarvington the Third. The Guiding Feather Guardian and the Young Shaman Leely Dusk. Though as long as their doors still stand in this guild, there is hope. So I ask who among you has the will, the cunning, and the courage to find our lost allies and return them home. For the mission is not over until all members return. Who jumped? Yeah. Oh. The Ellie. <laughs> but Dude right. fell 35,000 feet and lived. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, where we last left off. The party had gotten a request from the Guildmaster Tempest. Asking giving an opportunity for a mission. 
Three of the guild members of Domar Dorvington III, Guardian, and Leely Dusk are still missing. You had accepted this quest, and traveling out, you had found yourself going to the former Poor Choice, the current Black Hide One. As from whatever, whatever attempts they had made in the time after Vok's death had led to them to go into hiding once more. You met the yeah. crew Come up and set out once more. As the new day begins, what are each of you doing? Waking up in your little hammocks, cots? Hammock. Uh, we'll be I'm, out, I'm on the deck cuddling with, uh, with Pike. <laughs> Right. Um, Faye wakes up. I think I've now spent more time with Pike as Arbuckle than I have with Bok. Yes, you have. Yeah. <laughs> um, Faye, uh, goes to the kitchen. Walking and, in, uh, you can see that. sits by, sits by the table nearby. Hmm? Going into the kitchen itself, you see it said is early in the morning cooking. <laughs> Oddly enough, every time he has to reach something on the higher shelves, you see as he sort of takes his tail and use it as like a lift. Just <laughs> landing down, continuing to cook whatever he has. Ow. Oh my god, Sid. <laughs> so uh, uh just hearing the owl alone. Faye uh quickly jolts to the direction of where that sound goes. Looks like just peeking up who is like behind the counter. Oh no, it's like just right oh. behind the table. He's only two feet tall. You just see the tail sticking out every once in a while. <laughs> oh, it's the little lizard friend. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't re recognize your name. What's your name? Sid. Oh, that is a lovely name. Thank you. As he like sort of goes back, preparing whatever he is, and it looks the smooth smells smells delicious, but it looks like someone's like it looks like the most haphazardly cooking ever. Like you know when you go into those hole in the wall diners, walk in the back and just like grease and everything there. It looks like that. You're not sure what he's cooking, but it's like the smell is amazing. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Go, fella. Heading over to you. As you wake up, give me a perception check. Virtual night. First roll of the night! And actually, for the second episode of the Outcast Guild. Uh, how do I do that again? Um, it should be perception that's in, under your skills. Yeah. So, and click okay. on the number next to it. I need physical dice. <laughs> <laughs> 14. As you get up, Sort of putting your arm, uh, getting prepared for the day. You notice something strange? A fancy framed picture of what looks like a half elven woman? No. Oh. You remember seeing this back in Jonathan's office, and you think you might have accidentally grabbed the frame as it was just <laughs> sort of a golden frame with a bit of a shimmer to it. Oopsie. Why did I grab that? I don't know. I rolled it was shiny. <laughs> I rolled randomly. Probably shiny. That's what I got on the trinket table. <laughs> <laughs> or as I've renamed it, the klepto oh table. Gosh. I love it. She went, oh, d just uh, your typical, <laughs> oh, it's missing a frame. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> Oopsie. I didn't know I didn't grab that. <laughs> Wait, should I, should I it's one of those Stephen Urkel's. That? Did I do that? <laughs> Drink. Yep, yep, I'm drinking. <laughs> uh, 
<clears throat> Damn, this ramen has a kick to it. <coughs> <laughs> you say ramen? I got cup of noodle, but basically ramen. Uh, gotcha. I got hot and spicy was the flavor. That's all I had. It's a good one. Oh, yeah, it I, is. I really don't want to finish the sentence. All right. But yes, wake up. You can hear as most people on the ship are getting ready. You hear the footsteps from above. Tryjack is waking up any of the stragglers who haven't fully gotten up yet. You see a Silvar, the uh, half elf, just laying in his hammock, and Tryjack puts his front paws on it and just basically flips him out, and then just starts licking his face like crazy. <laughs> I pull up a little flask out of my backpack. Take a hit. All right. And then some of my rations, and I beat it to pipe. You see the pike gladly eats it up, and then you hear a Sid starts chirping out, like little growls, and you see his pike gets up and sort of runs as Sid puts down this bowl of. You're guessing it's his food. It's like, uh, have you ever seen those homemade dog foods? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like one mm -hmm. of those where, like, I can't tell if it's good okay. or if it's just It's crap. something. It's good. It's... <laughs> it's definitely something. All right. Walking on the deck. <laughs> the weather seems to be fairly clear today. As I walk down to the, the kitchen area to grab breakfast, I look at Pike's food and I cast pure fried food and drink on it. Make it a little more tasty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then head down. All right. You see Faye is uh, sitting, reading a book. Morning, there, lads. How we doing? And last is, sorry. Or anything in between. I'm just doing fine. Just reading a very lovely book. Oh, well, what's it about? It's called The Natchez of Nore. The Hood of what? It's a more like a adventure type of novel. It has a little bit of romance in it. Whoa. Whatever keeps you entertained. You enjoy that. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee. Oh, that do reminds me. Would you like one yourself? I would like a cup of tea instead. Absolutely. How do you take it to that? Less. Less? Less. You. I go get the coffee. All right. <laughs> he just sort of pours you a cup with his tail. Hey, you go. What is an Anthony trick? Thank you. <laughs> so talented. Everybody here. Like, put it back there. Still continuing to cook as he's putting out these, like, basically, it's not a, it's sort of like a buffet style, just with these plates he's put out there. You get the sense Sid does not understand most human stuff because these are, like, the fine china, like, <laughs> plates he's putting out there just with piles of bacon, eggs. Probably bacon. <laughs> Fuck. Does every character you make has to have a pocket bacon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a Mark thing more than a character thing. Alright, and Gabella, what are you up to? Um, so I get up out of my hammock and um, take the picture frame mm -hmm. and kind of like put it behind my back as I'm like walking away towards to go put it back where I found it. All right. And grab some <laughs> more stuff along the way. Does Gilbella walk <laughs> past me when, when she does this? Does Gilbella, you see Arbuckle when you walk past 
when you're going up there. Um. Oh, hi, Ar Arbuckle. I'm just asking if, they, if if you yeah. walk by because I want to see if I can clock the uh the picture frame. <laughs> I do you walk by, yes. Just my passive. Do I clock it? What's your passive? Twenty. Uh, roll a sleight of hand check for me, Gabella. <laughs> Physical dice. You can do it. Although, if you roll um, on the virtual dice better than me, then do virtual. <laughs> it's a 10. Yeah, you see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Crazy kids. All right. Going back up, you see as Jonathan is sort of getting prepared for the morning. Uh, <clears throat> it is strange that you first walk in there. You have seen Forge classes before, wonder about, but a lot of them a, you haven't seen an Awoken one, really. One that has full sentience. Some do He's work... woke AF. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is, like, it's strange to see one actually care about the clothing they have on and such. As he sort of, oh, uh, you see, as he's just sort of getting dressed in the morning in his own room through the plain doors. Okay. Give me a stealth check just to put the uh, picture back. Fifteen. All right. For the fifteen, you go to the desk and you just put it right back where you found it, facing towards the chair, like, okay. <laughs> Did she actually put it back where it belonged? Yes, it was right on the desk, but she, that, <laughs> sort of like you put it like I think it belonged right here. It was right there. <laughs> and as soon as you walk out, like you see as Jonathan walks in there, you can hear him just go, uh just look towards the picture, say good morning, darling, sort of gives two kisses to a kiss to his fingers and puts it towards the picture. Mm -hmm. It's huge. As you see most of the crew now walking in towards the other at the front bow of the ship where the kitchen is. You can smell Leo. now the food filling up the deck. Leo, are you miming reading the book? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm just imagining that's how Gilbella reads it. Like, just corner of the eye, just. But that's Faye, not Gilbella. Or Faye. That's Faye. <laughs> Too many names. Brain no worky good. I'm, I'm be, she's completely dead on looking at somebody and just going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. I, I, I clock Faye doing that as I'm taking some of my coffee and bringing her tea. You you doing all right there, Les? You you you're staring me dead in the face, but it looks like you're trying to read. <laughs> oh, I'm just reading the book. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my eyes are luminescent. Okay. Well, that means you can look in three different places at once. That's what people think it is, but it's just actually just normal eyes. You fuck some. You... Oh, I... not many people can do this, but you made me speechless. That's quite the feat. And I walk away. <laughs> you um. So as each of you find yourselves in the little kitchen area, small table set up for most of the crew here. Again, this ship was not made for a massive crew, so. You all sort of fit perfectly in there. It's just sort of dining area slash your grandma's kitchen. Still wants to sponsor okay. other people left. Yeah. Hey, slaps the book closed. Looks at the tea. Oh, for what a lovely tea. Did That's I make so it right? You didn't tell me how you liked it. What? Did I make it right? You didn't tell me how you liked it. That got a little Australian. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's like Arbuckle, can you sing? Oh, he got a brain uh, injury. No, no. Looks at it, smells it. It is quite lovely. Has a lovely scent. Someone make him Takes have a sip. I think I'm having a stroke. That is a, that is an interesting taste. What did you put on this tea? You said it's a little bit of my own special concoction. Oh, like, pour my flesh and I put it in my coffee a little bit. <laughs> well, curious, curious well, analogy. Yeah. Oh, that is quite a marvelous addition to this. It Glad brings like up it. an more flavorful, yeah. more. It's kind of appley, a little bit of cinnamon, but just a touch of nutmeg. I mean, so sweet. I just want to know: Thank is this you. like a homebrew, like like an actual like he, he makes like his homebrew hooch? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was gonna talk to you about this pre-stream, but I forgot. I wanted to be like a never-ending flask of like apple cider. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, it's not. It's no booze at all. It's just fucking apple cider that I made myself. Oh, <laughs> just it's always filled up. Okay, that's right. Because yeah, the moment you said that, I'm like, is this hard cider? Like, what, like... nope. <laughs> I'm so used to you having the character that's like, oh, I got the booze. That's better. That that was that was luck. I know. It's weird. This is somebody else. Okay. All right. Let's see as everyone has sort of gathered in there. Jonathan walks in the kitchen. All right, crew. I shall see you all. Hope you got a good rest. Oh, we did. Thank you, Jonathan. Very much obliged for your hospitality. Very cozy. No problem. So, um, we have about three days. We'll... Navi, <clears> as <throat> you see Navi emerge on the table, we have about three days until we're able to make it to Dorvington Hall. And there we'll be there for about a day, resources, gather some, and then get you to Calden, uh, the city of Calden. From there, best estimate, we can get you to Calden's, you can travel to Calden's Keep by foot. Or... Absolutely. I mean, Jonathan had mentioned something about some uh, some riding lizards that we could borrow. Um, yes, yeah. Am I? Still... I'm not mistaken. Am I? Yes, you may still use them. Absolutely, that would be that would be grand. If you guys need any help, I am a rather depth navigator. Anything I could do to help? Very well. Um, any help you can around here would be fine. Um... Let me know what I can do. I'm I'm sure Navi has it all under control. <laughs> sort of like hides behind the little holographic mm -hmm. book she puts up. You can still see the face through the projection. Don't underestimate yourself, Navi. You are quite the being. Thank quite you. lovely, too. Mm -hmm. right. As well, there. Primarily, you know, whatever you want to use it. So about just to warn you, if we do run into any problems, say, well, ships come about, hide any emblems you may have on you, just ring towards the guild badges you guys have, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> try to keep it, just try to keep a low profile, trying not to get their attention right now. Absolutely. Very well. Hope you have a pleasant day. You as well. Let me know if there's anything we can do to help. And they cast me a chance to start collecting all the empty dishes and bring them into the kitchen. Alright. <clears throat> so, anything you guys would like to cover this first day of travel? Uh, oh, let me see. Do I have my belongings in here? Yes, I do. Uh, after breakfast, I'm guessing we'll all be up on the deck at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pull Gilbella aside. Hello, Hello. Hello. Can I can I have a word with you for a second, if you don't sure. mind? 
Of course. This morning, when you were walking back, I clocked the frame. <laughs> we, these are very nice people. They're doing a lot for us. Maybe we shouldn't be taking what doesn't belong to us. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I can't help it. It's, we need it to was work tiny. on that. I, I understand it. it was a very pretty frame. It, it doesn't was. belong to us. No, it doesn't. We, there's a time and a place for uh, that kind of act. This isn't the one. Let's, let's try to control our impulses. Okay. Boy. We'll try. Sounds good. And I, th I throw a ball over to Pike. <laughs> Pike sort of looks at you for a second and slowly moves. He try Jack book it down that way. <laughs> <laughs> Like the old bulldog versus that basset hound your aunt got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hot dogs on the run. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. At some point. As, what? I'm gonna, at some point, I'll, let, I'll call for Navi and ask if there's anything I can do to help with navigation wise. So, as you enter into the navigational area, you see as Navi's seemingly plotting out the course, um, mm -hmm. what course going to be taking, examining weather forecasts that are coming in. Mm -hmm. You can see from uh, the table she has set up, the uh, <coughs> certain holograms of it seem to blur out on sections where you see a cloud. About five or six of them emerging around the continent of the Lancer. Mm -hmm. Along with that. What's going on? What's going on here with these clouds? Oh, um... That's so, just weather? Uh, Eldritch Storms. They're, uh... Oi! You should don't cluster like that! Um, they've been flaring up a lot more lately. You Didn't have any idea why? I'm Does Faye know of the Eldritch Storms? You all know of the Eldritch Storms. They're just certain crossovers with other planes. Oh. That were not crystallized or actual storms that came in. They're momentarily, but they do flare up a lot more. Um, they sort of mess with the, re the system we use to communicate and see the the areas. Interesting. Real bad if I get, if I get into one. Oh, yeah. uh, can I help you, Mr. Jones? Huh. I'm looking to help you if I can. Huh? Anything I can do. I am, like I said, I am. Something of a navigator. Okay. Um. The one thing I, as she does, sort of look for, she go asking for help with navigating around these storms itself. Mm -hmm. It seems like Navi is very uncomfortable heading into them. Mm hmm. Um, every time something like me gets in there, I have to. I have to shut off. Not do it. So, mm -hmm. with that, will you make a nature check for me? Nature? Either nature or survival. Ooh. Survival. You must be a farmer. Nature should be your thing. Nope. <laughs> nature is not my thing, I'm not, ironically. Survival is. And that's an 18 on the die plus 7. Alright. So, <clears throat> with that check there, you're able to predict what course these um, storms are going to more like more than likely take within the next couple days. Meaning that you have now removed any chance of you running into an elephant storm <coughs> for next three days. For the next three yeah. days? Yes. So that means the entire journey. <laughs> <laughs> well, the entire journey to Dwarvington is in a couple more days to get to Calden's Keep. Yeah, no, it's just a one point to, yeah. Okay. But yes. Because you are able to, with your own manual way of figuring it out, you're able to predict it all. Mm hmm. As you guys finish, you see his Navi with you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anytime, Navi. Happy to help. <clears throat> Thank you. Cool. You're right, Navi. No, you're right, Navi. Um, yeah. 
guess uh, a lot less stress now with those gone or those being avoided. Oh, good. Well, I could help with that. Anything else on your mind? Um, not really. Just uh, um, I don't really like the place we're heading to, or not Gorman at all, but uh, Calvin. Oh yeah, what's up? She sort of she looks at you for a second. And goes, There's a reason why the crew failed. Oh, that's where you guys were heading. When uh, the incident happened, I knew that, didn't I? Um, you heard from Jonathan about they attacked mm -hmm. the ship. Mm -hmm. And Navi takes it personal, but she sort of looks at you going, um, they, they, Jonathan they, mentioned that you, uh, they did something to both you and him. Let me get to you guys were well, not quite as helpful. Uh, Mr. Jonathan, the, or Captain Jonathan, they controlled. For me, I couldn't see anything. Yeah, she sort mm -hmm. of pulls up, like, in this room itself. Mm -hmm. Sort of this holographic as a blue coat takes over it all. Mm -hmm. You notice as objects that they were created sort of got knocked over as if something got bumped or something. Mm -hmm. But you don't see a figure walking in there. Mm -hmm. All the soldiers, uh, until they fell, couldn't see them. Couldn't help them. Like, it's not your fault. You did the best you could. I'm sure you, from what Mr. Jonathan had told me, and you are the main reason why everybody that did make it out was able to get out. I was made to protect the people here. I was made to watch over them. And you did. You did. You watched over. You're not going to catch everything. As much as you might try. It's not something you can blame yourself for. Weird, especially for a tiny hologram like this to see one cry. Mm. Make an insight check for me. Insight? Okay. Nat 20. <laughs> Alright. With your nat 20. <laughs> oh, Don't mind my phone. There goes the <laughs> <laughs> Everything just fell when I moved the camera. I, don't why. <laughs> I my believe light fell, but no, my um, phone fell. With a nat 20. Mm -hmm. you, seven. you spent time around Guardian. Mm -hmm. And you remember when he... It wasn't... You don't think it was like the Awoken as a lot of... Being Awoken as a lot of the uh, Forge class or the few Forge class you've met have spoken of? Mm -hmm. It's strange as... This seems like Navi's first time actually experiencing... Feelings? Sadness. Mm -hmm. Really. You also get the feeling that depression is also one of the first parts of it. You see, as it's almost like a her reaction to it is almost as like a child feeling emotions for the first time. Dad, but until we get scratchers, they never went back. <laughs> <laughs> you get the sense that this is as long as Nami's been awoken, it's been recent. She has mm -hmm. not been. It's more like the other constructs you would meet in this world. Mm -hmm. Not too long ago, you imagine. I can tell you having a different time, young lass. Can I call you lass? It's okay. Okay. But you need to know, no matter what you're doing, or what you weren't able to do. It's not your fault. You did everything you could. I'm sure everybody knows that. Did we just stumble into a Peanuts cartoon? <laughs> nah. Alright. Thank you, Mr. Mm. Arbuckle. Or Mr. Jones. Eh, just Arbuckle's fine. Thank you, Arbuckle. They're friends. My friends call me Arbuckle. And I wink. You see as that smile comes on her face once more. There it is. It's always good to see. If you ever want to talk, let me know. I'm always around. Will do. 
Thank you. All right. <laughs> Moving on to the second day. <laughs> the morning itself, another fine day for sailing. You can hear above your birds. There's, you've gotten close, closer to the coastline. Here. You hear the birds down below. Sort of echoed through the wind, but... The day seems fine itself. You guys like to do anything this day? Continue. Uh, continue bonding with Pike. As okay, so Faye is going to announce a group meeting. With who? With the three of Gil us Bella or everybody? and our buncle. Uh, just to There's Gil no Bella end. and our buncle. There's no end. Our buckle. No end. <laughs> I just said Gilbella and Arbuckle. No, you said Arbuncle. <laughs> Did I say Ar I didn't. I thought you said and Arbuckle. I heard Arbuckle. It says and every, Arbuckle. Every okay. time you say Arbuckle, it sounds I'm hearing Arbuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the. Okay. Arbuckle uh, so. Big Ghost. Well. Since we have started to get to know along in each other, and since we're going to go in on this journey together, I would like to get to properly know you all. Okay. Sounds good. What would you like to know? All right. Uh, first of all, I would like to know about your skills and abilities. You first. All right. <clears throat> Um, if you don't mind. Oh, no, no, not at all. I'm very quite open. So, as you all may or may not know, I'm from the House of Moriarty. My great-grandfather. The House of M? The House... Yep. And, yeah. All of my powers are possessed by my father. The father of the stars. And, well, how don't I just show you? And... Try, uh... Faye is going to cast a miniature size Arms of Moriarty. Her harm arms of Hadar, in this case. But it's arms of Moriarty, for flavor. Alright. And goes and casts it on her little hand. And what does that look like? You see, as there's a bunch of eldritch tentacles. Eldritch? Oh. Well, isn't that These are my borrowed powers. Oh. Oh, okay. Certainly come in handy. Okay. Especially on date night. <laughs> and also, why don't I let you all introduce it to him? Takes her shoulder guard, place it on the table. What am I looking at here? Oh, what? What am I surprised? As the shoulder guard just tried to open its eyes. It is a shape of... You all see it's like an octopus face. Does it have a beak? <laughs> nope. It's not showing the beak. I'm just imagining from that, like, Martian Manhunter's Perfect World version of it, where it's just like the tentacles <laughs> going way down here. Way down, yeah. <laughs> You've got Cthulhu on your fucking shoulder. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's... Yep. <laughs> 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 oh, well. Hello there. I... Oh, hello there. Good to meet you. Well, well, you I'm must gonna... be Faye's friends. Oh, mm -hmm. how lovely to meet you all. Oh. Oh, horrible, Uncle Jones. Good to meet you. And I'm Gilbara. You speak to oh. oh, pleasure well, to meet you all. Well, what can we call you besides... Um, 
What shall we call you? Oh, you can just call me father. I, I, no disrespect to you, but I have my own father. He's the only one that I call that. Oh, well, uh, what's it got in here? Let's see. Oh, you can just call me Moriarty. I'm gonna call you Mori if you don't mind. Mori? Ah. No, that's a lovely nickname. It is. Thank you. Good to meet you there, Mori. I look forward to uh, getting to know you better. Well, likewise. Kim, not gonna lie. It's a little off putting at first. Oh, <laughs> wait till you get to read the real me. <laughs> huh. I'm terrified. It's strangely excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm off to sleep then. Take care of Faye for me. Always. You as well. And kind of shuts his eyes. Puts it back on. <clears throat> and the last thing I have on my, well, resume or repertoire, I am part of a nobility. Is so it a... if you. Huh? Oh, you're, you're royalty. Oh, you're a lord. Not or a lady. royalty specifically. More like very important person, quote unquote. Baron. Baron. Baron Fay? No, uh, go for a duchess. Duchess? Well, well, <clears throat> well, your grace. It's always, it's always good to be around somebody of a noble birth. You might have quite a sway in the community. Yes, it is quite good as noble blood. Uh, I wasn't. But enough about me. Let's go for it. All. Um. Miss Grace, dear. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell us about you. Well, um. I am. Or, or I, I used to live in the Witchlight Carnival. Oh, I've, I've heard some, some things about that carnival. I don't know if it was good. <laughs> I heard that there was just one guard. You only have one arm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know what, what, what happened to him. Oh my gosh. Um, that's kind of a long story. Um, His name was Torgus Gidfoot. <laughs> hey. Um, Torgus, um... I don't know the, the whole story, but he was in some kind of a battle and lost his arm. That's pretty much all I know. <laughs> that must do you do you want <laughs> the actual story? <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. When Torgus was a child, he was invited okay. to said carnival. Upon entering said carnival. He was, um, he's a dwarf, he's a barbarian, he's pissed off and drunk half the time. <laughs> Actually, he's a kid. Yeah, but he was still pissed off and drunk. <laughs> <laughs> he's a dwarf, they get started getting drunk at like three. As soon as you can reach above the bar, you start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good, because they're only, you know, three people. Um, at one point, he was getting ushered around and uh, security was hassling him. As they, as they would, a, a drunken, degenerate dwarf, barbarian person. Um, and he got mad and he, he took a swing at one and chopped his arm off. Corgus was my character from a different campaign. Nice. <laughs> nice. Here you go as a, a little bit of backstory. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. That's a better story. <laughs> oh, a witch light carnival. Never mm -hmm. heard of it. 
Well, how does it look like more to about go there? Now. I don't think we want to go there. Are they still on this plane of existence? Yeah. Do I actually know any of this? Player wise? Uh, yeah. I would say with your Character -wise. history, like you, your life you've spent so far, you may have heard of it. Mm -hmm. I'll roll a history check if you want me to. Sure, roll one. Yeah. And uh, uh, Faye doesn't know a about history it. History check too, please. Nineteen. Uh, Eleven for Faye. Not much. <laughs> yeah, you've heard of, you've heard of the Witchlight Festival. You don't... I would say you know it, it goes with my archaeologist background. That I would know about. You know, I know a little bit about. Any who's all. Any who. So what do you do in this witch-like carnival? Yeah, what is? What was your job there? What did you do? Um, I did tarot readings. Oh, a fortune teller! How do we decline? I actually brought my deck with me. I. Yeah. That was my family's special or job while um, being in the car. They, they all have read fortunes now, did they? Mm -hmm. Start off with my great grandparents, and then my parents, and then so on and so forth. My family is still back there. Oh. oh. Are they there voluntarily? Uh, yeah. Yeah, voluntarily they chose to be there to have a different life and I'm I'm tired of the carnivals so I want to play an adventure but do you still yeah. know how to card read right I do yes maybe I, like I could fortune. borrow your skills for one of my aunts and mm -hmm. uh, she's always screaming at night and I I really am curious about mm -hmm. her future you know, I can do a reading, yes? Would you? If you want mine, if you want to. Oh, I'm curious to see what my fortune type it favors. Oh, uh, do it to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> right now? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah if, sure. you, if you don't mind, you know, it's up to you. You can, uh, get, hence, you can do you an can say no, and we can do it another day. Oh, uh, we. Could do it now. Who wants to go first? Mr. Jones. Absolutely. Yay. Um, so she goes into her bag, pulls out her pulls out her deck of cards. Um so I'll follow me over to the table. I go over to the table and then so sits down at the, at the table and starts shuffling the cards. And deals them out, um, or deals them out like onto the table in a straight line. Um, Arbuckle, I want you to pick yes. three cards for you, please. Okay. And is there? Do I need to roll something to pick, or just actually just say numbers? Just say that um, you pick. Yeah, just say numbers. Yeah. Okay. I'll pick two, seven, and nine. Um, I'm trying to, trying to think. Um, so Faze is like, and Faze is like closing in on. On what, uh, one, uh, what Gilbella is doing. Just yeah. leaning in, paying close attention. So she's, yeah, um, Gilbella takes the cards, looks at them. So the first one that you have is the sun. 
that's usually a pretty good one to have. And it's upright, so which means uh, joy, success, and celebration. That is very oh, well. lovely. Isn't that quite, quite the, quite the proceed? Um, your next one. So she points to to the middle uh, card. Uh, that is temperance, which is also upright, which means uh, middle path, patience, and finding a new meaning. Yeah, that tracks. So that could be meaning in life, meaning in career, um, anything of that sort. Um, and the next one, your last one, she points to, to the last card, um, that is justice. Oh. Which, uh, which is also upright, which means, um, uh, clarity, truth, or cause, um, and Fidelity. effect. Oh, well, so I'm fine. I'm just a ray of sunshine now, aren't I? <laughs> Well, we are the, the, old, the oldest and the wisest. Oh, you got that one right. Um, oldest, not quite sure from the wisest. Exactly. I'm okay, pretty well, sure you have years of experience. That was oh, quite lovely. Thank you, Gilbella. You're welcome. These are pretty positive cards, which is awesome. And then, so I, take... I try to be a positive guy. Did, did you actually <laughs> pull cards, Heidi? I did actually. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, That's I, it took me a while. I've had players before like pretend to do tarot card read, but then you were so spot on. I'm like, did you actually pull cards? <laughs> that was so cool. All right. Yeah, I just so those were actually the cards I pulled. Yeah. Nice. That's... Oh, uh, have a me. Yeah. So um, Gabella takes the, the cards, shows them again. Um. And then lays them out again um, on the table. So, Faye, take three cards. Okay. Did you shuffle the deck? We don't I... want to pick up the same ones. I did. <laughs> I shuffled the cards. Hey, so there. I'm just okay. asking. No need, no need to get fussy. <laughs> I'll take three, seven, and eleven. Okay. Well, we'll see how good the shuffle was. I picked seven also. Um, so your first one is the tower. Which is interesting because this one is reversed, which means disaster avoided, delayed disaster, or fear of suffering. Faye kind of goes a step back towards <laughs> Little. And kind of just phase out for a moment. And back to reality. That makes a lot more sense now, you think? Um, so this could mean a lot of things. Uh, could mean that relationships that you have are weak or crumbling or don't last very long. Um, sometimes can be painful. Uh, careers, um, sudden job loss, um, you could, you could be, uh, in a job that creates a lot of chaos, mm -hmm. um, and it could also be, this could also mean of, um, making sure that you have funds put away, like, like money put aside, um, for different, uh, scenarios or disasters um and it could also have unwel unwelcome surprises that could be in store which i could like could come a part of that your second card is the world which is upright which means fulfillment harmony and completion And like goes for a very a slow smile. Yeah. So this would be somewhere recent. So um in the 
upside of your first card, which um, your 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 relationships have a sense of deep fulfillment and gratitude. You're proud. You're proud of yourself and all that, that, that you have done that thus far. Um, and you have worked hard to reach your financial goals. Oh. Um, your last one is also upright, which, and it's the chariot which means direction, control, and willpower. How many sure going to drive once we get on the land? <laughs> Most definitely. Um, so this could mean you... Um, you take your ambitions far. You're, uh, you take them with clear understanding of what you want, and you know the destination of where you want to go. And you're focused on getting there. And that is it for the readings. Oh, so all oh. in all, very positive. Oh, very good. Very interesting. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. As you did see it for a moment, but she, uh, there's a sudden tear of that's running down her cheek. Are you okay? I'm... I'm okay. And <laughs> kind of cleats it up. Do, do, do your tears <laughs> normally glow like that? Or is that just reflection from your eyes? That's... It's nothing. Ah, let it flow. No one here is going to judge you. No. Hey, well, I guess that leaves me now, don't it? Yes. I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a simple man of simple means. I live back in my cabin. I farm the lands. I also handle the, uh, the services for fallen members of the guild, making sure they're they're acted with respectfully to the, to them the members' wishes. That's one of the reasons why we're stopping in Doverton. The the former captain here. He wanted to be buried by in a tree. By door, by door to know. Uh, keep him. I was issued him. Uh, and I hold up my my urn of Vak. I'm gonna make sure he's treated fairly. I'm with him, it's with the apartment script. But uh, yeah, that's really what I do. I have a, a certain set of skills. It gets me through. A uh, Faye looks at the urn. Does it have a plaque that says, uh, Sir Captain Bach? Mm -hmm. Sir Captain Bach. I wish I could have known you. Honestly. I heard. Well, he was a good fighter. He was a bit of a dick. That's right. And he sees Nor walking by. Nor just <laughs> walks by. That's right. Yes, I, <laughs> I heard he had a, a wonderful weapon, though. That was made by uh, the, the, new, the the now captain. Not, not Jonathan. Uh, what was it? The young lady's name? Amber. Amber. I heard she made quite a weapon. Oh, was it the... the... The, the axe was, was a dwarf that. that asked me, named Amber. Yes. Huh. <clears throat> she must be a very good crafts woman. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I hear it's quite the weapon. You like to call it the Remington Love Redeemer. Oh, that is a lovely name. That makes sense, because on the iron underneath his name, it says the redeemed. Oh. I guess he finally found his, uh, his redemption. Hopefully. Hopefully he's resting well. Right. 
But, uh, if we're gonna be traveling together for a while, it's as it seems. At least until we get the, uh, the rest of the... our mission accomplished. We might need to think of a name. True. It's always easier for us to, uh, introduce ourselves to others. Well, I've got any ideas. Not off the top of my head. I'm, I'm, I'm just spitballing out there, so we could all think of something. Maybe we could come up with something that works for everybody. I like that. That's a, I think the last group, they called themselves the Misfits or something. But, well, it seems okay. It's kind of a weird name. Wow, is that, that is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is an the, adequate the, name. They, they were a league, a league of Misfits, so they were like, they were some kind of Justice League or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of very <laughs> verbose. Yeah. They seem like an odd mean. group. I would have loved to have seen them in action, but they seem like a very... Whew, a very odd group indeed. Well, we are going to meet one of them. Eventually. Because... Yeah. Well, we got Amber was part of them, and she's kind of our benefactor, I heard. I think. Is that how it? The benefactor? Is it benefactor? I mean, is she's endorsing the group? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, she's fronting the bill. Queen Lord Amber of Blackhide or something or other. I just find a ship of Blackhide one. You used to have a different name, but they're covering it up. I'm curious, what was the other name that he covered well, up? When we, when we got here, I, I listened to Tarp that said Black Hide 1. It said the poor choice. I think that's a much better name. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> it seems like it was, it seemed like it fit. <laughs> yeah, what we're, it does what fit. What we, what we were told about that group, they made a lot of poor choices. I, I, no, I don't want to speak ill of the, the dead or missing. Oh, of course not. But they were definitely a, a bunch of misfits, as they call themselves. Oh, there's something we might want to might want to think about. Come up with our own identity. We good. could take, and I'm just throwing out ideas. But we could. Use one word for our name. The Redeemers. I do like that. I do like that. Just it does on seem, our It does seem like a redemption arc. Yeah. Mm. We are the Redeemers. Sounds good to me. And me too. The Redeemers it is. <laughs> don't cry chat do not cry do not throw your tears away for this moment <laughs> i know this is a very touching moment but also the meta jokes <laughs> yep <laughs> all right it's exactly how we would have talked about them yeah yep <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of dicks. <laughs> Alright. So, is that all you want to cover for this day? Yep. Yep. As and, we uh, yep. take Yo, our... that's exactly how that works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. As... Another day passes. Final day of travel. As this morning you're woken up by Navi going... Attention, we'll be in like, this afternoon, Farvington Hall. Oh, oh, well, oh, thank you, Navi. Face stretches from the hammock, lays off. I, I give Pike some scratches under the neck. There it goes. You're a good Alabar. Well, time to get our equipment ready. And yeah. starts gonna miss you. putting miss backpacks. You, buddy. <laughs> says pack your equipment up for the day heading in there 
I grab my barn door shield. <laughs> <laughs> barn door. It's a big ass shield. Cause I'm a big ass guy. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> All right. Bring that with you. I gonna see as crew themselves just sort of. It feels as they get closer to Dorrington, like they feel a bit more, less tense about what's going on. You see each day when they get up, try and keep around. A lot of the less odd looking ones, such as Silvar and the other crew member, Aggie, being mostly on, you know, mostly visible on the deck while those looking like Nar and Sid usually hide away a bit whenever they've seen or feared that one of the oil ships would be close by. As they get closer to the ring hall, tension seems to be lifted a bit. Mm -hmm. As you guys... This day itself. Everything seems to go... according to plan. As the ship brings closer as the mountains... For a while there, the clouds were blocking your view. You see as the mountain peaks are emerging. And for a moment there, it looks like you're going to almost crash. You see these giant doors with... Probably almost... These are 60 to 100 feet tall. As they're opened very slow. See the path below. You guys travel through the mountain cavern. Feels a bit cramped at first. There's some points that you're not. It feels like you're not going to make it through. He sees it opens up. The dark cavern releases into a bright light. As inside of this mountain, the spiraling city surrounding a massive tree, a few thousand feet tall. This tree itself seems to be giving off light similar to the sun. You've made it to Dorvington Hall. I think that's the train I'm supposed to go to. You see, as you guys were docking towards the upper portion, you notice as soon as the gangplank's put down, a strange looking door guard whose face is mostly covered with hair, eyebrows so bushy you can't even see the eyes, and a beard just covering everything else up, going, Yeah, hey, how'd you go, nigga? You're gonna need to repair that there, you know what? I'll tell you what. Oh! Oh! We got Boomer! You know, I went and get all you put it right there, and everything gonna be good right there, and you know what? I look at Faye, and I look at him and go, that boy ain't right! I'll say! Does anyone speak under common? I actually think I did. Yes! No. Faye does speak under common! As you hear this, you hear clearly. I have a pistol. Well, good morning, everyone here. I hope that your flight was safe, and do you need any repairs, or are you just looking to dock for the time? In addition, do you know how long you'll be staying here? What do you say? Oh, he says, uh, welcome, and how long are we going to stay? Oh, I wanted you to do the accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do the accent once I speak to him. Fair. So he's, what are, he's asking, what did he say? I, I'm sorry, I just got lost in my own head for a second. Oh, he's just saying, welcome, and how long are we staying? Hello there. Hello. Hey, brother, here you go, right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yes, sir. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, um,. Well, we're planning to just, uh, give a friend here and gonna just, uh, just nudge on our bunk, our buckle, our buckle, See? Jones. Now you yes. said See? Our Now yeah. I said it. <laughs> now it's stuck. It's our, I'm not crazy. Our buckle. Ish. <laughs> our buckle, <laughs> Jones, and kind of. Um, do please show the urn. 
Um, I'm gonna. Could you let him know that I want to? I just want to. I want to shake his hand. Could you let him know that? Oh, I'll let him. Hey, there, I know. 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 Hey, I shake his hand as I do. I cast tongues. Well, um, <laughs> good to meet you, sir. And um, oh, you're here bringing one of our home. Just bring someone home. <laughs> I let him know. That, but hello. Um, I do have the the former captain of the ship. Uh, we are here to do his last rites and give him a, give him a proper burial. Uh, we'll be here for probably a good two days before we have to move on. I think. I think that sounds about right. Up oh, to sounds great. We'll make condolences for the loss. Yeah. I do appreciate it. And I do hope you besides uh, besides sleeping by. I do hope you'll stay here and pleasant. Oh sure it will be. Oh. Dwarven are mm -hmm. always very nice people. Oh, Scorpion. He was. And I sorry to get you. Appreciate it, sir. Everyone knows you. I heard you in your running. Yeah. Yeah. You got to end with the full body dry heave. It's from the no, 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 from no. the gut. It's from the gut. No, from the no. If it's dry heave, that you're, yeah. you're speaking goblin at that point. It's on the verge of undercommon goblin and abyssal. Yeah. It's you know they're, they're very similar dialects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you as he just sort of shoots off. Uh, by the, any chance, who is the captain here? The current captain? Uh, the current captain, oh. I believe his name is Jonathan. It's he's Jonathan. The one that's, uh... he's... Thank you. Is I there? don't know. Party, 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 party. Now he's just. Now he's just seeking his chest. All right. Does Jonathan speak the language? You can get the sense that Jonathan sort of picks up on it. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, do you need help? We can we can help translate if you need it. No, I'm thinking of the most of it. Um her did dear on near I tell you. Her did her dirty. As he tells him, like, try to get across the two days. They'll be here. I can hear the conversation in the background. Sounds like a mix of the Hardy Dars and the Penis Party. Wah 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 wah. Hard a hard a hard a hard a wah 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 Yep. Yeah, I gotta pee like a pregnant woman. Yeah. Yep. Same. All right. <laughs> so everyone will be right back. This isn't where I parked my car. Uh, please stay by. And stand by. Stand by. We'll be back. <laughs> Go get your drinks refilled. Use the bathroom. Whatever else you gotta do. We'll be right. Back. <laughs> All right. So, did you guys step foot onto the? Did you guys step foot onto the first ring of Dorvington? Clarify, you guys. The city is sort of almost a complete zone. Each level of it has a different ring. It looks like the first ring is for mostly the shipyards, bringing in materials and depositing them. And the rings themselves are carved in the interior of the mountain, as it seems everything has been carved out of it, along with the tree itself having a big platform on each level. So, as you guys head out, you can see the town itself is fairly busy right now. It's in the afternoon. You can smell different baked goods. You can see the advertisement for drunken dwarf nuts. 
A strange coffee shop that keeps popping up around here. <laughs> and and a popular the item, box. the Dorbin coffee. <laughs> Warning can make someone insane. <laughs> That's what happens. It all stems back to the coffee. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, that's where it all started. But okay. As you guys keep traveling down, second layer you see, this is more, I believe just craftsmen and such materials. You s notice as many blacksmiths are around here crafting different items, some stating about magical properties these items have. And... You keep wondering. Oh. You guys won't stop anywhere and check it out. You can't. Check out the, uh. Uh. Drunken Dwarf Nuts? No, I mean anything. But yeah. Traveling down. Oh, just anything. Okay. No, we'll start with Drunken Dwarf Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Alright. You guys see Did you get the sense this thing was not built to be like a dwarven place as the counter is too high you can see behind as there's like sounds of step stools being moved put down as they're walking up the doors themselves are surprisingly built for people of average height and not you know dwarven size i sold the duck <laughs> You still have the oh yes, you're the giant in the group. <laughs> Always. As you guys go in, see as uh, one of the baristas look at you going, uh, "Hi, welcome, to Dragon Dwarf Nuts. How can I help you? Uh, what would you like to drink? Treats? Food?" Oh, hello there. Um, what do you, what do you recommend? Uh, well, are you looking for something sweet? Are you looking for something to wake you up? Are you looking for uh, something? Oh, uh, let's, uh, let's go with something, something to wake me up, and maybe something to eat. I'm already sweet enough there. All right. I'll well, go for something have, and eat and sweet. We have a couple different versions. We have kick in the rocks. We have slap in the face and punch in the gut. Oh, well, those sound, don't they sound delightful? Well, Ooh, uh, slap in the, the face sounds sexy. Five different. Uh, is five shots of espresso put into a small container. Slap in the face is ten put into a large. Or vent. Oh. Sorry. And no, no, no. That day does not mean large. It means twenty. Punch in the gut is a grande size <laughs> fill all with espresso. With a cup of absorbing coffee. Well. Do people actually leave here? Or do they get carried out after having a heart attack? Uh, they leave here. Not that many people oh get that. My. If you want something, we can always put espresso shots in something else. Would you like something more earthy maybe I'll flavored? Try, or... Maybe we'll try something sweet. All right. Well, we have um, our typical, our famous mocha caramel macchiatos. You can have one of those. Uh, we have our... Ooh. The um, new flavor is in a springtime. It says to be taste of lilies. Oh, that sounds... Quite heavy. I'll go for that. Do you, do you have anything fruit flavored? Uh, we have passion fruit. We can make one of those smoothies for you. We also can get you some... Uh, I, we can get a, what kind of fruit are you looking for? How about a mango? Smoothie? Sure. Mango banana. Okay. That down for you. I'll go for... Hmm. Maybe, oh. maybe somebody... Some of these cake pops, they look delightful. <clears throat> Strawberry passion fruit. Smoothie? Smoothie. Mm -hmm. Alright, and for you, miss? Ma'am? Um... Uh, sorry. A kiwi passion fruit smoothie, please. Kiwi passion fruit? Oh, that's a good choice. And what are the names for these? Uh, Gilbella for me. Alright. We can put that on the Artie. Uh, alright. Bay. All right. Bay. They'll be right up Bay. for you. And how many <laughs> pops did you like? 
How many are gone? Well, we have a dozen right now. We still have more in the back if you want more. We just made a whole fresh batch. Can I take a dozen of the fresh batch? All right, then that will be one gold for the whole thing and the drink. I'm going to go down the table. It's on me, there, guys. Thank you. I put another. I'm sure there's a tip cup there because there's always a tip cup there. I'll put another gold in there. All right. Thank you. Faye is going to. Yeah, you're quite welcome. Faye is going to be very, very subtle and just put five gold pieces in the tip cup. <laughs> I also God. put five gold Not in this tip cup. Oh, it's the war of kindness coming with this campaign. Do I clock, <laughs> Do I clock those two tipping? I would say yes. The higher two twos are so generous. That's very kind of you. Glad to see it. Love to see it. All right. So after a little bit of time, you hear, uh, Gilly? A drink for Gilly? I think that's yes. That's me. A drink for Arby's? Oh no. We have the mate. And oh, no. they? Is there a uh, they here? It's, it's, it's they then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that are one of my pronouns. Uh, she, her, or they, them. Okay. You're drinking. Because <laughs> they never get those fucking names right. Imagine if I actually said Arbuckle. Oh no, the Arnbuckle. <laughs> Iron buckle. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for that one. I'm like, okay. it, 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 it. So, Faye takes the small sip just for taste. The drinks are good. It's just it got the wrong names. I take a sip of mine. Like that's quite good. And I put a little bit of my tighter in there. That'll make it better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just imagining like anytime someone sees it. Oh, you got you got the booze in there. Uh, kind of <laughs> leans in, kind of leans in with the cup. Would you mind? I bring it right off. I put a little bit. Don't want to put too much. I'm gonna put some hair on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I Unless mean, I can one. do that because I am, you know what? You're what? Changeling. I don't know. I don't know you're a changeling. <laughs> well, now you know. No, yeah, good to know. <laughs> I mean, uh, you can change, you can change into things. Yes, and a couple of other things. Oh, like for example, voice changing. Well, that's a, that's a <laughs> thing. Oh, oh my! I was expecting such a deep voice from out of such a little person. Thank you. <laughs> that's, again, a little off-putting. <laughs> You're weird. I don't think you're bad, but you're weird. <laughs> well, it's kind of on brand. Fair enough. Shall we, uh, shall we take these drinks to go? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yes. What would you guys like a fake pop? They're fresh out the oven. Oh, yes, please. Mm. I'll take one. I give it to you. Yeah. All right. And once again, I have cake pops in my inventory. So, all right, with the pocket bacon and the cake pop. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Going in my side satchel. <laughs> all right. So, get set off. Traveling farther down. Here's the bustling shops. Everything's going full swing right now. Um, you do notice something, Arbuckle. And what do I notice? You. It looks like a massive statue of a familiar person you've seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, covered in like a gold plating to it all. You see what statue of what well, looks like a Goliath. No hair at all. Uh, standing with a mall in his hand. The plaque below it reads, The Giant Slayer. Well, he's not gonna like that. He's nice. not gonna like that one bit. For the rest of you, you see <laughs> as the statue of Domar. 
by it talks about one of the about the siege on the Dorvington Hall where some giants had broken through the doors somehow and he was one of the first to defend and get the guards to protect or give the guards time to gather and help strike against these giants before any major harm had happened I'm sorry he did wonderful Scotch. things, but he is not going to be happy about being there. About that being there. The statue is huge. That's what she it's said. About 20 feet tall. <laughs> and it looks That's what... like. <laughs> I'm making a bad joke. I'll drink for that bad joke. <laughs> You notice what looks like a dwarven woman stands by there. She puts a, a bouquet of flowers by it. Still wearing. You see that she has a. Her clothes are mostly, mostly black. You can still see that she's dressed as a blacksmith itself. Beard. Seemingly has been trimmed, but still goes to about her stomach. Do I recognize her? Uh, make a history check for me. Nineteen on the die. All right. Plus three. Uh, this is Donya Dorvington the fifth. Bill Marson. Mama D. Yeah. Mama D. <laughs> along with the head of the Dorvington clan. The whole family's there. Oh, I would absolutely <laughs> recognize it. Yes. Yeah. Legend is, does she recognize it? Let's find out. At the current time, now we just see as she sort of goes back. And here are some words spoken in Dwarvish. Towards the statue. And then she starts to walk away. I'll give her her place. We'll catch up with her later. Who's she? That's uh, Donja Dwarvington, the fifth. Fifth? Fifth. Oh. Fifth. She's the matriarch of the Dor Dwarvington family. Domar's mom. Oh! Big guy. Oh. Don't call him big guy. You ever see him? Oh, he'll smack you stupid. Oh no. Worse than a slap in the face drink? I think he had a couple of them. <laughs> hey, he liked his, he liked his coffee like his women. Strong and violent. <laughs> Very nice person. Indeed. And powerful and able to keep you up all night. <laughs> All right. Just because I'm a man of God doesn't mean I can't make the occasional weird joke to her. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's even funnier when it comes out. Like, Bach is like, okay, here we go. You, it's no. like... <laughs> <laughs> I have a humor, jeez. I know, no, but it's just funny. It's like, you don't expect it from Arbuckle mm -hmm. until it happens. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more still comes out. Yeah. But alright. You still get the essence of Vak anyway. <laughs> the spirit lives on. I have the urn. I mean. <laughs> alright. So. Alright. Traveling farther down, you see the city still bustling. You make it towards the base of the tree. Mm -hmm. Each of you notice. This is a massive carved doors inside of it. Like, they not really carved for, they look like they're added in. They're not just the same material as the tree, but it looks like the tree's opened up. Mm -hmm. You see above it the marking of the alma. Grown out of twigs and roots. 
core um, at the peak of the arc. She is. What? Sorry. Go ahead. I know you're not good. And go, go, go. you see as multiple different followers wearing the robes of the All Mother Oops. are moving about here. Some giving off prayers to the tree. Others helping with whatever they can around here. Oi. Pretty sure this is our spot. Before we do anything, I think we should uh, go talk to Mama D. Let her know we're here. She may want to come. Mm -hmm. Pay her respects. Will do. Um, do we still be, yeah. do we still see Mama Dorrington, or did she, she head back home? She headed back, but on your way traveling to the base of the tree, you did see the Dorrington Ford. Uh, mm -hmm. We know as the home of the Dorrington. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I've been there before. It, again, this is one of the odd buildings. Most of the doors here are built for dwarves. And usually, they don't mm -hmm. reach above five feet. Mm -hmm. The doors here are about 10 feet. Narbuckle, for you, mm -hmm. outside your own home, you're able to, like, actually oh, walk in. Comfortably. <laughs> not have to have your head tilted to the side or anything. Oh. Floors themselves about mm -hmm. reaching almost 15 feet. I'm going to knock on the door, but I'm going to feel like in one of the old, like, World War II movies where the guy... That the soldier goes to knock on the door to tell the parents or the wife that the husband just died. Yeah. I'm bringing that telegram. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, like, um, I'm just sitting there going, all right. And knock on the door. <laughs> Ow. Don't do that when you have a pit on your head. Duly <laughs> noted. I just Duly noted. basically punched the backing of the pin into my head. Ow. Oh, wow. Oh, gosh. No blood, I'm good. All right, but as you do, and see at first, uh, half drow opens the door in a wheelchair. You see the family inside. Most are wearing black. Um, uh, hi, can I help you? Hello there. Um, how you doing? My name is Arbuckle Jones. I'm here uh, representing the guild. Is Diana home? Um, Did I say it right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, mom. As you see this dwarven woman, start, that same dwarven woman you saw by the statue. Mm -hmm. up. Yes, she's sort of cooking still. It's strange. Even for those that haven't been here before, it feels like something's missing. Mm -hmm. Hello, Miss, Miss Dorvington. The name's Arbuckle Jones. I think we've met many, many years ago. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm here with the guild. Uh, I'm sorry. Tempest. He called me to... I'm one of... I'm one of the first. First gen. Um... He asked me to do a favor. Said that there was a mission. That, unfortunately, recently... Took a bad turn. What part of that mission was to rescue your boy. And the other part was to show Shadow final respects to someone that I think you you thought of as a son. The young captain. Think of them as a son. They were my children. My 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 apologies. I don't mean any disrespect. It's fine. But thank you. But I am here. I have his. I have his ashes. And we were going to bury him as his wishes by the old mother's tree. And I thought you might like to be part of that. I mean, you and your family. I think so. Too. It's, it's completely up to you. I wanted to make sure that you were more than welcome to come to show your last respects. And you have time. So you can grieve properly. Thank you. And I, I, I'll open my arms for a hug. She goes in for a like, hug. What's he got? There you go. Like, she is. She's like I, the strong woman. She, as soon as lift the hug, she sort of breaks. I'm here for you. you Anything you and your family needs. For each of you, you can see inside. It's not that she had lost one son, but there is a plaque of 
multiple you see the picture of um, one plaque of a group together mm -hmm. two different pictures uh, three pictures hung up one of being one of being Vok from what you saw from his funeral another one of Lily and of Delmar well we are unable to save the young captain we are going to find Delmar and Lily we'll bring them back do everything in my power. As um, let me get a coat on. Uh, it's been presentable. Take like your time. Years. Tomorrow, take your time. We're in no rush. Mm -hmm. Please. Would you please. like to sip on my juice? Come I in. made it myself. Please come in. Uh, sorry. Would you like some? Would you like a cup of my cider? It's very delicious. I make it myself. Sure. And I, I find a cup just randomly around and just pour a bunch in. There you go. It's quite delicious. I care what else you. Yes. It is the best apple cider that you've ever had. <laughs> that it's hot, and spice, and delicious, and everything that it needs to be. Like perfect flavor. Everything else is mm -hmm. not too overpowering. It's not too mm -hmm. bland. All right, but um, Spent decades making it perfect. You guys do you notice while walking in here. First area you enter in is the kitchen. You see a hallway at least to the family room. There seems to be. You see how massive Thornton family is. A face, something that you sort of feel home looking at too, as you see. Really, this family almost twenty members in it. You see all these different beings of different different backgrounds, different races, different cultures all put together. You notice that she has a yearly family photo. And each year it keeps going on from the first one, as you notice, her holding this baby Goliath that's almost the si like half the size of her <laughs> at this point. Um, you keep seeing as they go on and more family members are added into these photos. You see is the final one being what looks like on a similar ship to what you guys were on. Mm -hmm. And you see Vok, Lieli, a <laughs> hobgoblin and a tiefling sort with them. Are they there? Yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, they okay. You see as multiple different members are there. Um, the uh, home itself feels welcoming to any types as you see everything's been fitted for anyone here. From people of normal height to people in wheelchairs and such like that. It seems like Danya has made this a home for any of her children. Faye looks looking at the pictures. And on every single one, he kind of goes into a remembrance, like a flashback of all of her family members. Dang it, and right on the good part. Uh, this break is brought to you by the merch store, Outcast. Uh, Redbubble.com backslash the Outcast Kill. For all of your Outcast Guild merch needs, we've got stickers, we've got postcards, cups, anything that you might come and might need, pillowcases, bed sheets, posters, tapestries, even gaming mats, and anything else. The Redbubble.com backslash the Outcast Guild, telling you all headphones. Buy the merch. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go deal with fighting dogs. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do the home itself. As you done, you sort of going back and start making yourself more presentable. Feeling that 
this woman has taken the beating after losing so many. Right. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. You see as uh, Della, the half drow, is putting out food. You notice as an odd, sort of sad um, dwarf. Older than most dwarves you have met, actually. Sits at the dining table with a half drinking, a uh, half drinking bottle, and sort of puts it back on his counter. This little rolling bar he has. You were given a stew, very filling, mm. very tasty. Best stew. Thank you very much for the food. This is always delicious. Thank you. Monster will get to cook. No denying that. <laughs> He's going on. Damn it, the brain injury. Mm -hmm. Arbuckle, stay with us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm smelling Thanks. toast again. <laughs> I think I'm having another stroke. <laughs> Okay. See. As. Anything you guys want to cover here? Nope. Uh, Faye would go and. Uh, go to uh, Mrs. Mama D. Mm -hmm. And gives her condolences. And I would do the same with Faye. He's right. He's right. Damn right he is. <laughs> <laughs> you see us. Uh... Thank you so much. I'm sorry, I mean, I've been working here usually, but... That's quite right. It's been through quite a bit these last few weeks. sort of step out I'm ready I wanted to run this by you first when we were on the ship I spoke with uh, Jonathan the acting captain he gave me some of Vox's belongings I was going to put with his, his ashes and bury with them if it's okay with you he said that these things were very important to him and I show he has the original guild, uh, guild badge that Vox got his pure miles badge showing where he came from and where he was going and on top of that is a dwarving team dagger that mama d gifted to vok that he carried with him wherever he went all right all right if it's quite all right i'm gonna bury these with his ashes unless you'd like to keep them for your own Very good. Thank you. I'm sure he would. Right. Let me make our way to the tree. Nothing done to the tree itself. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> I'm doing funeral right for my own character. Okay. <laughs> you see as you walk down there. Um, greeted by one of the one of the followers the children of the all mother as he leads you inside um, you see the base of this uh, tree uh, has different they don't really have a place of like an actual temple for the all mother rather the entire clan is seen as the followers as everyone is a child of the all mother in their eyes but inside the tree almost like catacombs, different urns of those that have passed, those that have been buried here. You see memorabilia of them put in these sections. As you as he leads you through this massive, this one section, 
Nice. See if what, uh, simple carved out section. The macaroni is cold. Back below yeah. it says box. Mm. You notice above the section itself. That it has no snow. The Redeemer. As okay looks at you and goes, I feel informed of this past. We prepared this for him. I hope it's to his recommendations. Like him. It's beautiful. I'm sure he will vote it. Uh, well, so how about the live? This. Absolutely. I very much appreciate all of your, all of your help in setting up this uh, beautiful resting place for our beloved captain. And with that, I put my arm around Mama Dorrington and bring her up. I'm just gonna sit here. Maybe we'll have a moment of silence and remembrance of your of your fallen son. We'll think of all of the good times that we had. Some of the some of the funny things that he's done. Maybe some of the less funny things he's done. But they were all part of his character. Good, the bad, and the ugly. And made him the person that he was. I've heard many, many stories about him. And the acts of true bravery and while he may not have been the most well-tempered of fellows he had a heart that was even bigger than his temper no matter what he would always stand behind those he loved but usually he was stood in front of them making sure that nobody else took the hit but him and for that we always love him We'll always remember him. Thank you, good captain. May you rest and enjoy your retirement. And I put the the urn on the shelf mm -hmm. with the two the two badges leaning on it. I'm right in front. I'm guessing it says Dwarvington on some point in it. I have that facing forward. It doesn't say Dwarvington, but it has the emblem of the logo on. Yeah. yeah. And I have that facing forward. Right. You found your name, sir. You found your name. As you see those placed there, you look around and the section of the tree is a bit special. You see as well, Arbuckle, even though you weren't a full follower <clears throat> of the All Mother, more mm -hmm. taking a liking to her teachings. Mm -hmm. You did know yeah. some of the few that were held high in the case of the for the children <clears throat> of the All Mother. Next to him stands a string, another urn in a section next to it. A staff adorned with flowers at the end. About it. The Elder Kalan says is the name to him. And from where she came from, which is marked as Iron Hall. Oh. <laughs> 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 um. Yep. Yep. As this is held, this is a special section for those that were seen as pillars for the All Mother. Things to connect her into this plane. And in Celestial, above the entryway, you see those that bind her to our homes, our hearts, will never be truly forgotten. No words, true words were ever spoken. 
None of these cells will ever be forgotten. Yes. As you finally lay Captain Sir Captain Locke to rest in the home that he had found. Oh. Though he was not a child, though he was not initially the son of Dorvington. He was buried as one of their children. He wasn't a dwarf between by blood, but he was a Dorvington nonetheless. I don't think there's many Dorvington's that are Dorvington by blood. There's a lot of Dorvington's by blood. <laughs> yes. All right. Cheers. You guys are let out. Leaving Miss Dorrington out. Yeah, she is still crying, but happy that she finally got a place to rest. Day has... Day turns to night. As the tree starts to fade and you see the shop starting to leave. Some closing down. I think there's a fine spot to end the session. Yeah, because emotional damage. Yep. <laughs> We're leaving on an emotional damage. All right. Thank you guys so much for sticking around this long. If you like what you saw today, please make sure to join the guild by hitting that follow button. And yeah. You can also check us out on YouTube, all our different stuff, and our own website. Spotify? What? Spotify, yeah. What? Spotify? We, we are a podcast level. Uh, yes. This is amazing. And we have a name. We finally have a group name. Yeah. We didn't and, and it didn't take us 12 sessions to get it. No. <laughs> yep. It, it, it's just... Oh. And it fits. It, it definitely fits. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. As always, make sure to keep calm, geek on. Thank you to my amazing players for making this session. Everybody, great. thank the DM. And yes, thank, thank you, you, DM. Thank you, DM. Headphone warning. Well, not yet. No, well, not I can do yet. Also, <laughs> because as we leave, everybody needs to make sure. Alrighty. Buy the merch! <laughs> Have a great night, everyone. Please stick around for the raid and use the emotes if you got them. Bye. Bye. Take a deep.